we think it's time to change the narrative from the focus on the problems, isn't it awful, to a focus on solutions. This is, for everything we can see, this is the moment when we can do it. There is a perfect storm in a good way. Uh, there's a business case for having more women in leadership. There's, uh, the World Bank has said that parliaments that have more women do better, have better decision making, and, um, and, and women have been earning 57% of the college degrees for about 20 years now. So we're ready, we're ready to rock and roll. One of the nine power tools is to use every medium, to employ every medium available to us. And nobody has employed every medium mm -hmm. more than Kathleen Turner. I recall that you realized very early in life that you enjoyed performing. Oh yeah. Well, my dad was with the diplomatic corps and so we came back to the States every two years for home leave, yeah? So one Christmas we got to go back uh, to Missouri and have it with my grandparents. So we went into this, this department store and, and um, as I was three or four, I guess, you know, and there's Christmas everywhere, all the decorations and Santa Claus is somewhere and all this is going on. And evidently, I climbed up on a case on a, you know, this, this one of those things you have in the store and started singing Christmas carols. And when people <laughs> didn't stop, my mother tells me, I went, well, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't explain it at all. <laughs> you knew at 20, that you wanted to play Martha when you were 50. I read uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf when I was 20 in college. It's only been done twice before in New York with Uta Hagen in the original production and Colleen Dewhurst in 75. And I thought, when I'm 50, because that was an imaginably old age to me at that point, <laughs> you know, I, would, I, wanted, I wanted Martha, I wanted to do Martha. So uh, I was turning 49 and I thought I better do something about this, you know. So uh, Edward Albee, he just put out the goat, you know, and he wanted people to think of the new work, not the old. I said, well, I just, can I, can I talk to him? Can I meet him? And he said, well, what do you want? I said, I want a chance to read it for you. I just want to read it for you. And he said, all right. And um, we did a reading. We finished the first act and we take a break. And Edward came over to me and said, I haven't heard anything like this since Uta Hagen. And I get very cocky when I'm nervous. I said, yes, and you've only heard one act. <laughs> you know, really, talking back to Edward, I'll be like that. I won't, what was I thinking? However, we did continue and, and read the whole play. And I thought, okay, um, I'll hear when I hear. And uh, I went home, and at 5.30 my phone rang, and they said, when do you want to start? And then, just before we opened, I turned 50. Aha, uh -huh. wow. the, power, the power of using your voice, the power of speaking up, the power, yes. If you, if you said the, uh, the man was assertive, this is a compliment, but of a woman, you would say they're difficult. I have certainly, for many years, uh, been called difficult, which means I have an opinion of how I want uh, something to be done, you know, or uh, touchy, which means I don't accept crap, you know, but it's the same action being done. You got to get a thick skin. One of the workshops that has become increasingly popular that, that we created in this past year is one that I call gender bilingual communication. Mm. You mean that a word means that, something to a man and to a woman? Not just a word, but mm. also the way we deliver the word. Yeah. Women tend to use more adjectives, tend to be yeah. more descriptive. Uh, the way, well, the, the, the like, well, the adding those extra small words. I am often guilty of using the word just or a little bit only. instead uh, only yes i fall into or, the you know category I'm, <laughs> you apologizing know, I mean, apologizing before we yeah. say what we're going to say so all of those are those are are attributes of of, of a group that has had less power mm. and 
as we take our fair and equal share of power, we're going to have to like stop that, right? <laughs> do you think that also accounts? Do you think it also accounts for the way you know young the girls up, the end up, the sentence up, 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 turn. up yeah. so that you uh? I mean, is that suggestive that we're tentative about what we're saying? I threatened to throw my daughter out of the car if she did that. She stopped. I teach and um, when I can, and I really, really love doing it. And over and over from the young women, from actresses, I hear, how do you avoid being typecast? And what do you do, you know, when somebody, I mean, I'm the funny one, or I'm the heavy one, so I have to be funny, or I'm pretty enough that I'm supposed to be this way. And I say to them, you will be typecast, don't help them. Don't assume you have to be who they classify you as. That's, you know, you're the one person who can say, I can also do this, or this is another quality I have. I do not understand, and I find it very frustrating, and this is far more than acting, I think, than, our, than my business, why we accept the classification someone else imposes on us. I don't like it. Power <laughs> tool number two, no excuses, power tool number two is define your own terms first before someone else defines you. Yeah. I was in Los Angeles at one of these restaurants of you know, ladies who lunch places. And there's a table uh, nearby of women who are, you know, 15 thou on the hoof here, okay? With the clothes, with the hair, with the jewelry, with everything. <laughs> And then they open their mouths, and they're talking like that. And it's, you know, it's like, why do you spend so much money on your appearance and then have a voice like that? It's so off-putting, don't you think? So that was how I, she asked me. I said, yeah, why don't women, you know, take a couple of thou of that money, sell a ring, and get some voice lessons. You know, what... Practical advice would Practical you have? Practical advice I can do. Um, first of all, avoid shrillness. It automatically makes people shut down. Avoid any sound that's self-pityish or whinish. Again, immediate shutdown. It, the ears just close. They don't want to hear it, right? Um, Is that true of men and women? Do you think? Yes, both? I do. I think it's true of both. Um, if you think you have a very nasal voice, then it's up in the front of your head. <laughs> then w be aware, try it, work it, work it down, get it out of your nose, you know, as it were. One thing you can do, you know, quite practically, is record yourself. You know, we don't always have any idea what we sound like from inside. So sit down with a tape recorder one day. Uh, sit down with your iPhone and put it on record. Read a passage, read a letter, uh, read a book out loud, play it back, find it, the qualities you like and the ones you don't in your voice. If you can identify those, work on the ones you don't like. I mean, you may dress to please yourself and to, 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 because you feel good about how you look. Why not the same thing with a voice? Thank you.